Hi. Um, so I'm here today to talk to you about the computer game called Fridroid RPG. Uh, Fridroid RPG is, uh, as the name implies, uh, a role-playing game. Oh, is that supposed to work? Never mind. Uh, so, uh, Fridroid RPG um, is a role-playing game. Uh, it is fully playable and can provide you with about six hours of fun right now. Uh, in the game, you play uh, as a creature from uh, another planet, wakes up on Earth in our future, uh, in a future where uh, robots will have turned against their, enemy, their human masters and started attacking and killing humans. So basically, you wake up, you have to understand what's going on, you have to fight for your life, and you will be fighting against uh, robots. Uh, the most obvious uh, way of doing that is using uh, weapons. Uh, so we have melee weapons, and we have ranged weapons, so you can use uh, table laser baseball bats or uh, laser rifles if you can find them in the game. Uh, but weapons are not your only choice. Uh, you can actually execute programs uh, on enemy droids. Uh, so the idea is that uh, your character actually is uh, part uh, a knife and part computer, and therefore it has the ability to execute computer programs. Now, the enemy robots uh, have a very uh, lousy operating system with a lot of security problems, and basically you can send uh, codes that, will be, that they will uh, happily execute. Uh, by the way, the firmware for the, the bots has been written by a company called Megasys. Uh, yeah, so you can run code. Uh, for example, we have the Calculate P program that will send some code to Calculate P to enemy robots, and they will start calculating P, and this will slow them down for a little while. Um, as a special thing, we have one program that starts uh, a mini game, uh, which, if you win the mini game, will turn your enemy to your side, so it will start attacking other robots. Uh, Fridroid RPG is a single-player game, so we try to have a very immersive environment uh, and uh, something that can actually get the player emotionally involved. So for that, we have about 20 non-playing characters with dialogues that we try to make fairly rich and uh, interesting. We have 10 original music tracks written by two different people over the years, and we have a fairly uh, specific and consistent graphic style. So let's move on to our first screenshot. Okay, so this is the main interface uh, of the game. The resolution could admittedly be a bit better. Uh, so here you see the main interface of the game, and at the left of the screen you have the inventory screen open with a few things that you can see. So there is the iron pipe here, which can be used as a weapon. We have the explanation of what it does. Uh, here you can see four programming books. I'm going to get back to it. Uh, you have an armor, you have a shield. And well, I think that should be pretty straightforward for anybody who's played uh, games like Diablo because uh, the interface of Fridroid RPG is fairly similar. Um, all right, uh, this uh, is a dialogue in progress. Uh, here we have uh, Bender telling me about uh, his brain enlargement pills. Apparently, he took too much of them and it made him here. And now at the bottom of the screen, there are several options that I can click to select what to say and make the dialogue uh, go forward. Uh, as I said, we have 20 non-playing characters. Uh, we try to give the widest range of options possible every time, so quite a bit of work went uh, into dialogues because they have to uh, be sufficiently uh, complex uh, for players to, to like them. Uh, we try to put a few jokes here and there, uh, and basically the dialogues are really uh, central part uh, of the game because this is how you will progress in the game, this is how you will get uh, quests and uh, items. Uh, here we have the programs screen, so as I mentioned already you can execute programs. Uh, some programs, like the analyzed item for example, will uh, be executed on yourself. Uh, some of them will be sent uh, to enemy robots. Uh, here we have the explanation of what the currently selected program says. Uh, and we have, yes, you can certainly see it, we have a, a field here called uh, it produced for each, uh, for each program. Uh, the idea is that uh, whenever you execute a program, you use your CPU, and when you, when you use your CPU, you will uh, increase your temperature, and there is a maximum amount of heat that you can stand, and actually, uh, if you want to run a program when you reached that maximum amount, uh, you can actually uh, still run a program, but you will then enter overheating and start losing health points uh, based on uh, how much extra temperature you have. 
Uh, so we have the uh, uh, running bar, experience bar, and there we have the else bar and temperature bar. Here it is completely empty. Whenever I run a program, it will increase the temperature, and when it reaches, and when it reaches the maximum, uh, I can actually still run programs, but I will start uh, losing else points. Uh, you can uh, gain uh, else points by finding uh, else portions on the map, uh, and uh, for temperature we have coolant, so we have uh, bottled ice, uh, liquid nitrogen, and industrial coolant. Uh, this uh, is the mini game that I mentioned. Uh, so if you, I'm not going to explain it because a significant part of the fun is to actually figure it out. Um, if you win it, uh, the enemy comes to your side and fights for you. Uh, what is interesting is that uh, this is actually the legacy of Freedroid RPG, which started off as a 2D arcade game, uh, which was called Freedroid Classic. It was a clone of the Commodore 64 Paradroid computer game. Uh, basically, you were playing uh, a robot and you had to take over other robots and clean up a, a ship. Uh, the original also uh, started turning Frederick Classic, which is ended now. It, is, it works perfectly and nobody is working on it any longer. And they started turning the 2D arcade game uh, into a Frederick RPG, which is an isometric 3D game. Uh, at the beginning, it was mostly two people, uh, one graphist, who is still with us now, uh, and one coder who left the project. Uh, I took over in 2004, uh, and my focus uh, was on uh, getting more people involved, because by then, while the game, uh, which was mostly working, the basics were here, but, uh, for example, we had uh, unbalanced items, so we had uh, lots of, uh, what was it, uh, laser swords or something like that, we had uh, 20 laser swords, uh, and it wasn't actually fun to play. Uh, the engine was good, but we needed uh, a bit more work on the, on the content. Uh, I succeeded in getting more people involved, uh, and the record we achieved was five active people at the same time. Uh, the problem is that very often it's still only myself or another person who is active, and it's very few people for a game like this because uh, there are lots of things that we should do uh, in order to improve it, and we need a bit uh, of help. Uh, so what does uh, Freeway need? Um, we have a game that lasts about six hours right now. Uh, we can obviously increase the difficulty to make it last a bit longer. Uh, I think we've already been to the fullest extent of this concept. Uh, now we need uh, more content. So we need more levels, we need more dialogues, we need more quests, we need more items, uh, so that players can actually have fun for, let's say, 20 hours, uh, which would be a, a good value for a single player game. Uh, I mentioned that we had music, we have good music, we have people working on it, but we only have sound effects. Uh, this is not very good because uh, it has a negative impact uh, on, the, on the emotion of the player uh, when it doesn't get uh, auditive feedback uh, of his actions. We need more graphic content, but every, everybody does. Uh, we need perhaps uh, better uh, development tools because the idea is that uh, we're a very small team, as I said, we need more people and uh, having a uh, easier to use development tools would probably help us uh, attract more people. And obviously, uh, well, many of you probably didn't know about us already, so uh, we're not very good at communication. Uh, we have a game that we think is fairly great. Uh, we'd like you to spread the word about us. If you like, try out the game. If you like it, talk about us. This is something that everybody can do. And if you find bugs, uh, you know what to do. Um, Okay, uh, I think I've run through everything I had to say. So uh, I have a little demo video that shows the, the game. Uh, it's actually short, it lasts two minutes. Uh, if you want to see more, we can talk, uh, after, we can talk uh, afterwards. Uh, and that's it. So video, uh, that's for later, but I'm sorry, I'm not. Uh, okay.
here we are. Here we are in the city, which is a kind of safe place uh, in the game. And this is where you will get most quests and talk to most people. Uh, because the outside of the city is uh, surrounded by enemy droids. So there is um, many people who live uh, outside of the city. I have some time left. Uh, so I realize I forgot to mention that uh, your character is actually from another world and he happens to be penguin shaped. Uh, now I have just one last thing. I have a bit more time left. So this is the contact information for Fridroid. If you want to try the game. Uh, yeah, uh, the game is written in C. This is one thing I forgot to say. It is licensed under the GPR. Uh, it's been around for a few years. Uh, we have made a release. Uh, we try to make a release about once per year. Uh, it depends on who is active because, uh, as I mentioned, we're not many people, so sometimes real life gets in the way a bit. Uh, but we try to make a release every year, and we're planning to do a new one uh, fairly soon. Uh, with a tutorial for the game, because players reported that it was a bit difficult to understand at first, uh, and uh, better development tools uh, so that people can actually help us uh, on levels, because this is the thing we need the most right now. I uh, guess I have time for a question or two. Do you have questions? Have you had any feedback from uh, developers like Blizzard Entertainment for this, because uh, the gameplay is so similar to Diablo? Uh, no. No. Story improvement. Story improvement. Sorry. Story improvement. Oh, so what, what, what kind of story improvement? Uh, I don't know. I mean, um, maybe you missed the extended. Uh, well, the story will, uh, most, most of the storytelling actually uh, happens through dialogues. Uh, so if you want to extend the story, uh, it's actually going to be done uh, with dialogues. And when you have the dialogue, you have the a character for the dialogue and the that character has to be at a certain place, so you have the level to go with it. Uh, so you have to add the map, the character, and the dialogue. That's how we extend the story. Uh, for now, uh, well, I don't know what to say about the story. It's, for now, it's enough. We don't, we're not thinking about extending it uh, for now, because uh, we can still elaborate a little bit uh, without uh, making a second act, for example, which is planned, uh, but for later. Uh, we have considered it, and we are single player game. <laughs> now, seriously, uh, multiplayer games uh, are different. Uh, you do not focus on the same things. Uh, here, we really want to get the player emotionally involved in his actions, and uh, this is role playing. Uh, what I saw, for example, uh, of uh, Diablo in multiplayer, uh, it's different kind of game. It's really a different kind of game. Okay, I guess we're done then. Thank you.